it's rolling, right? So we'll get people to watch yes. it. Keep it 60 seconds. All right, John Morgan, Pennsylvania Progressive. I'm here in Quakertown today with Patrick Murphy, who spoke at the event earlier this morning. Good morning, Patrick. John, it's great to be back with you. Uh, what do you think of the day today, the oh, dueling yeah. event? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful day here in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, uh, my, you know, my home, and uh, you know, I live right down the street. And um, it's interesting, Mitt Romney was supposed to be here. We don't know if he's going to show or not, but why wouldn't you want to come to Bucks County? Um, right, on a but, beautiful Saturday. On a beautiful Saturday. And my favorite part of the day, if you haven't seen it yet, John, is it's just like being at the Jersey Shore here in Bucks County because there's actually an airplane yes. with a flyer that says um, the one percent are funding Mitt Romney ninety nine percent and um, own ninety nine percent of Mitt. Right, yeah. right, yeah. and and I think it's it's really clear on that's what this campaign's about. Yeah. And you look at Mitt Romney, who won't be fighting for middle class families, who won't try and make sure we bring jobs back here in America and grow our economy, and. You know, it's interesting. His record as at Massachusetts governor was atrocious when it comes to middle-class families. Literally firing tens of thousands of cops, teachers, firefighters, job creation, where they went from 36th in the nation in Massachusetts to 47. And and another stat, that unemployment in Massachusetts before he took governor was lower than the national average. When he left four years later, higher than the national average. At a time when our economy was prospering all over the country under the Clinton years. Now let's be very clear. Barack Obama has done a lot and there's a lot more work to do, but he helped create 4.3 million dollar private, I'm sorry, 4.3 million private sector jobs. Uh, that's important and there's a lot more jobs that we need to have. But that's co coming after we lost over 800,000 jobs a month, month after month after month. 800,000 jobs a month in the last few months of the Bush administration. Barack Obama, 27 straight months of job creation. Now we could argue that not enough job creation, and listen, we all want, and he wants more job, jobs created here in America, but you don't do that by going back to the trickle-down economic plan of George Bush and Mitt Romney. Uh, has that trickle-down hit you yet? Yeah, I mean, I have family members that, frankly, are out of work and that are looking, and... And that's know, what trickle-down, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Not the wealth. And, and, you know, I look at my father, who's a retired Philly cop and a Navy veteran, who works three jobs, uh, makes 9.50 an hour on the weekends as a security guard. He's actually at work right now. Uh, and, and you know, we just need to make sure that everyone in America gets a fair shake. Uh, you know, we believe in capitalism, everyone believes in capitalism, but it, you just can't look after the top 1%, the billionaires in America. It has to be for all of us and just get a fair shake. And that's all we're standing for. When I look out over this crowd who's here to see Rami, I don't see a lot of people strike me as billionaires. Why would you support Mitt Romney if you're not a billionaire? Well, you know, Bucks County is a pretty conservative county. Uh, we're working as Democrats to make sure that we can do everything we can. And it's going to be a dogfight uh, come this November. Uh, and we need to make sure that Barack Obama and the Democratic ticket, uh, the whole ticket, from the statewide races, the congressional race here with Kathy Bufar, that that we come on top because it's too important. And Pennsylvania is too important. I will tell you that uh, if Barack Obama does not win Pennsylvania, he will not be reelected as president. We need to make sure, uh, or chances are he won't. We need to make sure that we get him. Odds are going to be pretty hard for him to get to do 70 without our 20 electoral votes. Correct. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the, some of the pundits are saying Pennsylvania is not going to be a battleground state. Well, they don't know Pennsylvania. As James Carver once said, you know, we have Philadelphia and Pittsburgh in the state of Alabama. This right here is, is, is you know, that other part uh, that James Carville's talking yeah. about. But I, I will tell you, you know, I'll, I'll be, you know, at mass, at, at 10 o'clock mass tomorrow morning on Sunday with my, my kids and my family. And, and you know, people always, you know, grab me usually after mass, not the word mass, mm -hmm. but after mass, they'll say, hey, Patrick, what's going on with this? And what's going on with that? Mm -hmm. and, you know, what does Mitt Romney really stand for? And, and, you know, I just point to his record. You know, people can have whatever rhetoric they want to use. Look at his record. Yeah. His record as not just Massachusetts governor, but also his record now when, when people like Barack Obama said as Commander-in-Chief, I will take out Bin Laden, the person who murdered 3,000 innocent Americans on 9-11. And he had the courageous decision to send in the Navy SEALs, those heroes, to do just that. Mitt Romney criticized him before he did it, said we shouldn't go into Pakistan to do that, even if we know that's where he is. I mean, think about that for a second. Think about a person like Bin Laden still walking on the face of this earth. I, you know, I'm glad that he's in hell right now, frankly. But we need to make sure that we get people like Barack Obama 
reelected to make sure that we continue to have the job growth that we desperately need here in the United States and, of course, in Pennsylvania. You alluded to Romney's beliefs. Do you think he has any core fundamental beliefs? No, you know, I don't think that Mitt Romney really does have a, a true political core. And, you know, and it's, it's sad in a sense. I mean, you twist yourself into a pretzel just to be elected. You know, my dad told my brother, sister, and I, you know, my dad was a Philly cop, and he said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And, and people may agree with me or disagree with me, and, and, and they'll continue to do so, yeah. but you always know where I stand, whether that was ending the war in Iraq, repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, raising the minimum wage, uh, fighting for that veteran cemetery, um, you know, here in Bucks County, one of those kinds. You know, the fact is, is that we continue to try and get things done and stand for something and work toward it, not just go along to get along. Right. If you could ask Mitt Romney one question today, what would it be? I'd say, uh, Mr. Romney, uh, first, welcome to Bucks County in Pennsylvania. I'm glad to stop by, and I'm glad that for a change you're actually taking questions <laughs> from from uh, reporters or even non-reporters like myself. But I would say, you know, what is your real plan? You know, is it really this basically $5 billion tax cut for the billionaires in America, which isn't paid for? Are you really going to add to the deficit? Are you really going to support the Ryan bill? which is gonna gut Medicare and create vouchers, which is gonna cost $6,300 per family, per senior. I mean, is that really your plan or are you just trying to cater to the far right wing? That would be my question. I don't think John that will give me the opportunity to ask it, but I wish he would, but it is what it is. But well, he was rather a, a liberal governor in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, was pro-choice, was pro-gay rights, um, and he's completely done a 180. What would stop him from, you know, betraying all these conservative voters? Well, you know, I think uh, he's surrounded himself with, with some pretty far right-wing people. You know, people who aren't really, you know, moderate Republicans. And I think that once he gets there, you know, the old saying, you dance with the people who got you there. Yes. And I think he'll, he'll cater to them. And he's adopted all the Tea Party positions. Right. So it's, it's a pretty sad indictment on who he was. You know, when you look at... His crowning achievement, his one real achievement as Massachusetts governor, was health care, to expand it for other people in a responsible way. We took that model uh, in the Affordable Care Act, the Obamacare that they like to refer to it as, uh, that is going to save tens of thousands of lives uh, per year and do it in a deficit neutral manner. And he's walking away from it. And it's, it's sad. Yeah. We're here at Bucks County. I interviewed Kathy Bukvar earlier, and she's running for your old seat against Congressman Fitzpatrick, who, before you beat him and took a seat, was a far more moderate Republican than he's been the last two years. And he's embraced the Tea Party agenda the last two years. Um, if you were running against Mike, Mike Fitzpatrick again this year, what would you have to say to him? Well, you know, I'm, I'm blessed with that. You know, I'm, I'm in the private sector. Uh, I'm doing okay, and, and I spend a lot more time with my with my family. And I have two young kids. You know, Maggie Murphy's now five and a half, and wow, and oh, Jack is two and a half. She in was fact, born. <laughs> Maggie starts uh, kindergarten this yeah. fall. So, uh, you know, life is life is good in the Murphy household. Uh, but we have so much work to do. We need to make sure we focus on these next less than five months to make sure that we reelect Barack Obama. We reelect Senator Bob Casey. That we make sure we reelect Rob McCord and Eugene Pasquale and Kathy, Kathleen Kane and Kathy Bookfar for Congress. We have to act like a democratic family and a team because when we work together, there's nothing that we can't do. Thanks for having me, John. Okay, thank it. you very much, no, Patrick. No, no, thanks as right. always.